Should nothing of our efforts stand, no legacy survive unless the Lord does raise the house in vain, its builders strive. To you who boast tomorrow's gain, tell me what is your life? A mist that vanishes at dawn, all glory be to Christ. Welcome to the Open Bible Podcast. I'm Pastor Jeremy, and along with Ethan Jones, we've been going through the book of Proverbs one chapter at a time. As we've gone through the book, we've been given glimpses or still shot pictures of what it looks like to live with wisdom and often what it looks like to live without wisdom in the various areas and situations of life. And this wisdom comes by trusting in God, by aligning our lives to his character and order. Thank you for joining us today. Our proverb today is chapter 25. And before we read, I want you to imagine that you've just finished your education. It's not a high school diploma. No, it's a special college degree for only a select group of young men and women. Your parents are uh, brag a bit too much about you because you're going to work in the king's court. You'll be assigned as an assistant to a noble and you'll find yourself around powerful people. It's exciting, but also a bit dangerous. And just before you begin, you've been given some last minute advice in the form of a commencement speech, so to speak, from Proverbs 25. These also are Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and the smith has material for a vessel. Take away the wicked from the presence of the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence, or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen do not hastily bring into court. For what will you do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame? Argue your case with your neighbor himself and do not reveal another secret, lest he who hears you bring shame upon you and your ill repute have no end. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. Like a gold ring or an ornament of gold is a wise reprover to a listening ear. Like the cold of snow in the time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those who send him. He refreshes the soul of his masters. Like clouds and wind without rain is a man who boasts of a gift he does not give. With patience a ruler may be persuaded, and a soft tongue will break a bone. If you have found honey, eat only enough for you, lest you have your fill of it and vomit it. Let your foot be seldom in your neighbor's house, lest he have his fill of you and hate you. A man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a war club, or a sword, or a sharp arrow. Trusting in a treacherous man in time of trouble is like a bad tooth or a foot that slips. Whoever sings songs to a heavy heart is like one who takes off a garment on a cold day and like vinegar on soda. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will heap burning coals on his head and the Lord will reward you. The north wind brings forth rain and a backbiting tongue angry looks. It is better to live in a corner of the housetop than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. Like cold water to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Like a muddied spring or a polluted fountain is a righteous man who gives way before the wicked. It is not good to eat much honey, nor is it glorious to seek one's own glory. A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. All right, now you're ready to serve in the, in the court. It's a great chapter, full of wisdom, but I want to focus on a couple of things that characterize someone subscribing to wisdom, not only in politics, but more broadly as well. 
verses 8 to 12 encourage patience and confidentiality. And we've chatted a bit about these before. But verses 13 and 14 add reliability to those important characteristics. Let me read them again. Like the cold of snow in the time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those who send him. He refreshes the soul of his masters. Like clouds and wind without rain is a man who give, who boasts of a gift he does not give. The importance of being faithful with what we've been given is seen in verse 13. And this is contrasted with being unfaithful in verse 14. And, and both use weather to illustrate this. Like the cold of snow at harvest. Now, I'm not a farmer, but I know around here that you don't want snow at harvest, usually. So this metaphor is is not referring to a sudden dump of snow while you're trying to gather in the grain. How do we know? Because of its explanatory parallel immediately following. A faithful messenger refreshes the soul of his masters. So a trustworthy envoy is being compared with a cold, refreshing drink during harvest. A tall glass of ice water after hard, dry work. Snow would be brought down from the mountains for this very purpose. Have you ever felt that refreshment? The the refreshment of someone who is reliable. Man, let me tell you how refreshing it is to have someone you can count on. Someone you can delegate a task to and know it's going to get done. And not just get done, but get done the way it needs to be done. I am privileged to serve with many men and women like this, and there are few things that encourage me more as a leader than someone who is steady and reliable with what is entrusted to them. This is contrasted with the unfaithful boaster who promises but does not deliver. It's like when you desperately need rain and you see the clouds coming, the wind picks up, but there's no rain. An unfaithful boaster Verse 16 will add self-control to confidentiality and reliability. But before that, in verse 15, we have another important characteristic for serving with wisdom. Listen to verse 15. With patience, a ruler may be persuaded, and a soft tongue will break a bone. Gentleness. I I love the imagery in this verse. Patience is described as a soft tongue, a gentle word. And what are our ruler's thoughts compared to? The hardness of a bone. That is the power of a patient and gentle approach to people. It can shatter the hardness of their ways. Reliability and gentleness. I saw the value of both of these in my boss, Carl, during college. In the summers, to pay off school, I worked for his landscaping company in Winnipeg. He was a former Mennonite pastor, but he had grown this commercial landscaping company. And one of the things I realized quickly is that if you were reliable, if you were faithful with the jobs you were given, you'd be rewarded. The first summer I worked for him, I I weed whacked for days on end, rocks pelting wherever I had forgot to cover up, sweat stinging my eyes, my hands in a constant gripped position, Uh, That was painful when I got home. But Carl appreciated my reliability over the years. He gave me more and more responsibility till I was his right-hand guy, driving the trucks and leading the crews. Until it was me who was able to appreciate a young worker weed-whacking faithfully. But Carl also showed me the power of gentleness and patience. In the service industry, this is incredibly important. I remember watching Carl interact with disgruntled clients, dissatisfied customers. He never matched the heat of their emotions. He listened, he asked questions, he appreciated them, and it was amazing to see them soften. The customer is not always right, but responding to them tactfully and with sensitivity always is. So let me encourage you with this characteristic of our, uh, these characteristics of our Lord. If you're working for someone today, be faithful, be reliable, do what is expected of you well, be refreshing. If you're leading someone today who is reliable, let them know how appreciated they are. If you're interacting with folks today, ask God to give you a gentle spirit. 
If you've been gentle with someone, if you haven't been gentle with someone, ask for their forgiveness. And may the Spirit empower us to, to glorify God in these ways today. Go in peace.